Hi and welcome to the video. My name is Laura Robinson and I'm a sales engineer with Microsoft Dynamics Serum Online in the US. And in this video I'm going to take us through one of the few topics that are geared towards administrators for Serum Online in the trial process. So this agenda that you see here is the agenda that we typically cover in the administrative webinar that's live every Thursday at 9 a.m. You can sign up for that on democrmonline.com slash webcast. And so in this first video, we're going to take a look at the first topic up there, adding fields and configuring forms. So with that, I'll go right to my CRM online org. This is a trial that I created just today. And there are essentially a few different ways to configure CRM just using the out-of-the-box tools. The first way is in context of the record that you're working in. And that's particularly useful if you are uh, let's say, you know, adding some sample data to an account and you realize that you're missing a field and you need to add that field. So we'll take a look at how to configure CRM from that perspective first. Secondly, we'll take a look at configuring the entity from the settings area and some of the other things that you can configure in the settings area. And then in another demo, we'll take a look at the data import wizard and how you can add a whole new entity as well as new fields as you're importing data. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is drill into accounts. And because this is a trial that I just created, I've got my handful of sample trial data. And so I'm going to open up A Store and we'll get started from this record. In this record for A Store, let me maximize this, I'm going to go ahead and hit the customize option in my ribbon. Now, please be aware that not everyone will have access to customize. I'm logged in as a system admin and so I have access to this, but not all typical users will. And so from this view, if I'm going through the account and I want to do some simple things like add fields and change around some configurations and things like that, I can simply do that on the fly by designing the form. So when I do this, I'm opening up the form designer, which basically looks like a blueprint. And I'll maximize this as well. So there are a couple of things about the account form out of the box that I don't need. Um, and I'm going to go through and clean these out. So address type I don't need an extra phone number field I don't need. I don't need shipping information. I'll remove that. And now it's asking me do I want to remove the whole section and my answer is yes. Okay. And so as I go through and clean this up I can remove any fields, any sections, any tabs as I see fit. Now if you're used to CRM 4.0 you'll probably notice that there are literally tabs at the top of CRM 4.0 and we've reserved that definition in CRM 2011, but we're calling these items on the left that you can navigate to uh, tabs. So these are your tabs rendered in CRM 2011. So another thing I'm going to do right from the start is actually scroll down to the section here for prefer preferences, because I know that it contains an owner field. And you'll notice that this field is asterisk in red and that means it's required and any required field I'm going to remove I'm going to move up to my general section and that's just a best practice for your users so when they go to save a field save the form they don't get a nasty message saying that they haven't completed a required field that's buried somewhere else so it's a good idea to just put those in the top um, and I might take some fields on the right that I haven't used yet and pull them into this form. So I might take account rating, for example, and pull it over. Maybe remove this one just to clean it up. Now at this point I can go ahead and save these changes. These changes won't go live to my users until I hit publish. So I'll just save as I go, which is just a best practice. And you'll notice that I've just been modifying the body of the form thus far. I've got the option to modify other sections of this form. I can also modify the navigation on the left. And you'll see when I select navigation now this is open for me to move things around. So for example if I wanted to remove orders and invoices it works just like my field selection. And the same goes for my header and footer. So I might want to simplify this and remove some fields here. And save. Now let's say we want to add some new fields and maybe we want to put in a placeholder section or tab for some uh, future integration we're going to do with another one of our systems that we're getting revenue information from. 
And in that case, I'm going to switch back over to the body here, and I'm going to insert a new tab. And with this tab, I'll double click on it to open it up, the properties that is. And I'll give the tab a name, just simply something like annual revenues, hit OK. And now you'll see that this is another tab here that I can jump to on the left. And let's go ahead and add some fields. Now the fields we need to add we haven't created yet, and we can do this from this view. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new field. And the field I'm going to add here is going to be called FY09. So, oops, 09. So basically we're going to put a placeholder here um, for integrating with that other system. Now I could make it required. I could also enable it, enable it for field level security. It's enabled for auditing by default, which is a new feature with 2011 as well as field security. I'm going to cut to the chase here and just go ahead and create that field. I'll name it as a currency field because it will eventually hold currency information. And we'll go ahead and do that. And just for the sake of the demo, I'll go ahead and create two new fields and we'll add them to the form. So I'm going to do a save and new here. And with a little bit of demo magic, I'll fill in my field type and save and close. And so now those two fields will show up in my unused fields list on the right in my field explorer. So let's go grab those. And I'm basically going to just drag and drop them into my section. And don't worry about these two base fields that get generated automatically when you create a currency field. These are for different purposes and don't have very much bearing over the UI of your form. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now we're going to do one more thing here, which is to take an item on the left, a related entity on the left to the account, and place it directly within our annual revenue section here um, as a subgrid. So if I go up to insert, you'll notice I can insert a few different things. And subgrid is one of those new features that we can take uh, items on the left and basically just put them right into our form. So we don't have to click through on the left, we can rather scroll down in the main form. So I'm going to add a subgrid and what we're going to add in here is opportunities. Now when I add a subgrid, I, ge I generally jump down to the entity here and choose what that is first because it ends up populating a lot of the other stuff here, like my label. I do need a unique name, so I'm going to call this open opportunities. And you'll notice that by default it's only choosing the, the related records and that's what we want. Now I'm going to also change this view to show open opportunities. So we've got the annual revenues as a placeholder for her past revenue information and we've got open opportunities listed as future revenue information. And I can do other things like display a search box. Uh, let me scroll down here a little bit. I can also show a chart only. And this might be nice for a sales manager view, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But basically, I'm going to, I'm actually going to choose a default chart here, and I'm going to leave the chart only off and hit OK. Now I can do some other things here, like format the um, length of this section. But for now, I'm going to leave that as is. And the next thing I'm going to do, because I added opportunities here in the main form, I'm going to remove it from the left. So I'm going to go and select the navigation menu, take opportunities here, and go ahead and remove. So very simply, as we're going through and just using the account form and using it within the trial from an administrative perspective, there are some very easy changes I might want to make in five, 10 minutes just to make sure that this form looks and feels like something that my users are going to want to enter data into. And so as I'm going, I'm saving, but now I want to go ahead and publish and uh, make sure those changes are live. And when that's complete, I'm going to save and close. Okay, yes. Now remember we started from our account record. I'm going to take this account record and just do a quick refresh and we'll see those changes take place on the account form. And there you have it, folks. So no, we now have the owner field moved up. We've got some of these extra address fields removed. 
If I scroll down here, I can now see the annual revenues fields that I created as well as my subgrid here on, in the main form. And so in the next part of the demo, we'll take a look at how we can customize the account entity in other ways. And we're gonna do this by going from the settings here. So within the settings, you've got access to customizations, and this basically allows you to customize anything under the sun in CRM. So I click Customize the System here, and you'll see that when I drop down the tree view for entities, I've got access to literally every entity in CRM that I can customize. So it's quite a few items. Um, we can also create new entities here as well. We were in the account, so I'll focus on the account and drill down here. Now we modified the form and we modified fields, but from this view we can modify other things like views, like charts, like the relationships and the messages. Um, we can also create new forms here as well, and so you'll see that with with this view of my account, I've got two forms by default out of the box, and this is pretty much the case for every entity in CRM. You've got a main form and you've also got a mobile form, and this is to configure what this entity looks like from Mobile Express. We configured the main form, but if we wanted to go ahead and create a new form, let's say for account managers or for maybe some other roles that just need a lighter touch to the account form and not as much of a data entry touch, to the account form. We could create a new form for that. And I'm not going to do that in this part of the demonstration, but basically when you do that, you have the ability to assign those security roles to that form and limit or expose those forms to the right users per security role. You can also do some other actions here like ordering the forms and so on. So it's a really nice way that you can start to build different views of, your, of the same data hide and expose things that aren't, that may be more relevant to one group of users over another. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this demonstration. Um, I want to go ahead and publish all my customizations again to make sure that everything is live to my users. And in the next few demos, we'll explore doing things like, like customizing the system by data import as well as how to do a successful data import and clean up your data successfully before you import it, um, as well as some other things. Stay tuned for more videos on how to set up business units and security roles, as well as processes including workflow and dialogues, and as I already mentioned, data import. And so with that, I thank you for watching this first video, and please look for our other videos on things that you might want to do as an administrator of CRM Online, especially during your trial process. Thanks, and have a great day.